All right, guys, we are back in my garage for another video, and today we are going to be talking about B58 cam issues. This is something that's not super common, but if it does happen to you, it can be extremely frustrating. So I just wanted to make this video to kind of talk about what I know, and hopefully this gives you a little insight in case you are running into one of those persistent problems that you just absolutely cannot figure out what is causing it. This might be potentially what's wrong with your car. Fortunately, I don't actually have the problem, but since I've removed my valve cover for completely separate maintenance activities, I thought this would be a good time to really show you visually what's going on and what you can look for if you potentially have this problem in your car. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as host these technical discussions so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in videos like that, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff, so that you can see the videos that I put out in the future. So what we're actually dealing with in a lot of cases is that this cam design seems overall very good. Most B58s run very strong. I haven't personally had any cam issues, but what I have seen is that there are usually one of two issues. And what the main one that typically happens is that this cam, the way that it's hanging off of this side of the cam bridge, seems to potentially have a failure mode. What ends up happening a lot of times is the bridge that's holding it in place cracks. And if that cracks, you're going to have difficulty managing your airflow on cylinder one. So what usually happens is somebody says they have a cylinder one misfire, it's pulling crazy timing, all of these problems and their car just is not driving really well. And the reason for that is because if this cam can't turn properly and actuate your valve, then you're not going to get the right amount of airflow in cylinder one. And so it's going to cause those misfires and rough idle and things like that. The problem here, of course, is if you do a compression test, you're going to pass your compression test. So if you think that you have like a blown piston or something, it's not going to fail because that cam can't open the valve. The valve is basically stuck shut or much more closed than it should be when you're cranking your car. So you're going to get good compression because closing the valve isn't an issue, but you won't get enough airflow when you're actually driving the car to have, you know, a good tune when you hit full load and full boost and things like that. So this is strictly for B58s. It seems like this cylinder one can potentially have an issue that's caused by this cam bridge under here getting a crack. Even if you are having the issue, you actually need to remove the cam to see it properly. The spot where it cracks is kind of underneath, so it's really hard to see from here. Um, I'll try to post a picture of one if I can find an example of somebody that had a cam bridge failure. But that's kind of what it looks like. It's, again, not super common. I know a lot of people with B58s have cylinder one timing pull and stuff like that. That is very common. It's normal. This isn't something that's directly going to cause that. But if you are having like really bad misfires, you've changed your plugs, your injectors, your coil packs, everything, and cylinder one just keeps having misfires and causing you to get a drivetrain malfunction, this is potentially a cause. Now, on the other hand, I've seen similar issues on other cylinders, and that can also be caused by a cam braking. And again, this is not super common. I don't want to freak you guys out, but this is just something you should be aware of. If you have, say, cylinder four is just breaking up, you've replaced everything, again, injectors, spark plugs, coil packs, and it's still just dropping out, compression passes good, same potential issue. If you have a cam that's damaged here, it can basically prevent it from spinning at the right timing, and you won't have your valve opening at the right time, so it can cause misfires. Now, if you're looking at it this way, the easiest thing to do is just to line up each pair of your cams, basically look at the pair of lobes and make sure that they're lined up the exact same. So you kind of see like that dot, those dots should be in line across a pair of lobes. So now that I removed my valve cover, I just did a quick inspection. All of them look good. Um, but that's something that you can check if you're already doing this, just to make sure that it doesn't look like any of your cams are in the wrong orientation. Because if it does snap, like, across here, then those two aren't going to be spinning the same as their, you know, opposing lobes. This also sometimes kicks out an actual cam position fault. 
So if you have that and you can't figure out what's wrong, again, you've replaced sensors, actuators, all that stuff, and you're still getting a cam position error, it's probably a good idea to pull your valve cover and just check to see if that misfiring cylinder could potentially be having this issue. So this is just kind of a heads up, letting you guys know this is something that can fail. It's not super common, but I've seen it on a couple cars. It's not a certain power level, fuel type, tune, anything like that. It just seems like maybe there were like a bad batch of cams that came out during a certain year or something, or maybe they had some manufacturing issues intermittently that weren't caught. Um, and so that's what I end up seeing from these cars. Another thing I've seen people say that running longer bolts through these caps can help prevent that from happening. I guess some of the bolts are shorter than others or they made like a certain change in one of the model years and they started using longer bolts. And those bolts, of course, allow you to get like more consistent and accurate torque, whereas a shorter bolt potentially could put you at risk of not holding the right amount of torque that you need, especially if you're hitting high RPM and things like that. You want all of those bolts to be solid. So I've seen some companies sell longer bolts or recommend running the longer OEM bolts in order to make sure you can kind of prevent that issue from happening. But like I said, we don't really have a good grasp of what exactly is going wrong. Usually when that happens, the bolt is bent, but it's hard to say whether the cam being like failing and cracking that housing is causing the bolt to bend, or if the bolt was loose first, and then that allowed the cam to kind of vibrate and create the crack. So it's probably one of those two in that order, but I don't think that it's something that anybody's really looking too deep into since the failures are so sporadic. But yeah, again, just wanted to make this video since I'm looking at it. Hopefully this helps if you guys are having this issue, or at least you can be aware if you have a friend, whatever, having something that's just this annoying persistent misfire on a specific cylinder and nothing they've done has fixed it. This is the next step that I recommend, you know, pull your valve cover, check your cams and make sure that nothing is damaged. And if so, then of course you'll have to go through basically rebuilding your cylinder head. So yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.